Hey there! In today's video, I will show you how to calculate an RSI indicator without using any additional libraries such as TALib or Pandas TA. So we'll just limit ourselves to using Pandas. By doing so, we will have to calculate the function and understand how it works. So let's get started. As always, I'll start with a blank Jupyter notebook but you can follow along this video using the IDE of your choice. So let's get started by importing the required libraries. I'll fetch the prices from Yahoo Finance. So let's go ahead and import Y Finance as YF. If you don't already have it installed, just do a pip install Y Finance. And let's see, let's do symbol equals yf.ticker. And we'll use Bitcoin's price. So that's BTC USD. Let's import it into a data frame. Let's call it data frame underscore BTC is equal symbol dot history. We'll use the daily prices. So interval equals one day. And the period is going to be the maximum period. And let's also show the result at the end. Okay, now that I think of it, let's filter the data frame by dates in order for you to be able to recreate everything exactly as me. So let's also import date time from date time, date time, import date time. And let's filter the data frame by date. Let's use, I don't know, the prices from the 1st of January from 2020 until the date of this recording and we'll do that as follows df underscore btc equals to df underscore btc and we'll filter it by the date which is the index df underscore btc dot index uh, and let's make it greater than date time 2020 january the first and let's also make it less than 2021, the 1st of September. Less than. And let's print it. Okay, so it starts here and it ends here. That's okay. Let's continue by removing these two columns that are really unnecessary when dealing with crypto since they don't have stock splits nor dividends. So let's delete BTC underscore DF underscore BTC dividends and the same for stock splits. There we go. Let's continue and okay, let's take a look at the definition of the RSI. Okay, according to Wikipedia, we start by creating, we start by calculating up and downs where ups are the, where the close is higher than the previous close and, and down is equal to zero. And when the close is lower than the previous close, down equals to that one and the up is zero. What is S SMMA? Smoothed or modified moving average which is an exponentially smoothed moving average. Okay, but I saw it in different variations where it instead of using an exponentially smoothed moving average, we also can use a moving average, which we'll use today because it allows us not to have an extra layer of abstraction and keep things simple. And don't worry, both RSI definitions are robust in the sense that you lose money using both. So. You can go ahead and read the article, but in order to keep this video short, let's go back and continue. Um, so the first thing we'll do is to calculate the difference between today's price and yesterday's price. So we'll do that by doing the following change equals to the F underscore BTC. We'll use the closing price dot diff. And let's see how that looks. 
Of course, this one is not a number since it does not have a previous date to calculate the closing price difference. So let's drop let's drop this one. Change dot drop drop an A uh, in place equals true. In place equals true. Let's continue. By using this change, we'll calculate which ones are positive and which ones are negative. So change up equals to, let's just start by copying it, change dot copy, and the same with change underscore down is equal to change dot copy. And now let's really go ahead and calculate what they are supposed to do is change underscore up and let's set to zero the ones that are negative so where change up is lower than zero set it to zero let's copy this and paste it in order to change down down and greater than zero let's set it to zero there we go uh, so if in order to see if we did everything correctly the sum of change up and change down should equal change so let's check that change is equal to change underscore up plus change underscore down and it seems to be like that but let's do it for the entire series and i think we can do that by change dot equals change up plus change down okay so at least we didn't make a mistake there now let's go ahead and calculate the moving average of the previous changes up and changes down the standard is to use the previous 14 data points so let's do that average underscore 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 up equals to change underscore up dot rolling 14 dot mean and the average down is going to be the change down the rolling average of the previous 14 periods of the change down and it will be negative and we need to and we need everything to be positive so let's add an absolute value here that's right so now we can continue and go ahead and calculate the rsi which is none other than uh, the average the average up divided by the sum of the average up plus the average down and in order to have everything between 0 and 100 and not 0 and 1 let's multiply it by 100 and let's call it RSI let's see let's get the first head the, the first 20 okay so that's okay the first have to be not a number because we don't have the we don't have 14 previous periods in order to calculate the rolling average and after that it looks i guess fine and i should clarify that if you compare it with libraries that do this automatically uh, maybe you'll find differences due to the fact that they sometimes use the moving average and sometimes they use also the exponentially weighted moving average so there's you should look how it is calculated on each in each case let's go ahead and plot it let's see how that looks rsi dot plot that looks okay but pretty horrible so let's go ahead and do a nice looking chart let's import matplotlib import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt and i'll also use this style which is 538 
and I'm, I also want to make the chart bigger, so I'll set the RC params of the fixed size to 20 and 10. Let's create two, two subplots. The first one will contain the Bitcoin prices. And, and the second one will contain the RSI. AX1 dot plot the F underscore BTC, the close, and let's set a line width of two. And let's set the title AX1 dot set underscore title Bitcoin close price price that's right and let's do the second plot ax2 dot plot it's going to be the RSI let's do it in orange and with the line width a little smaller because it moves a lot one and I'll also add some bands like in the 30 and 70 levels which indicate the oversold and overbought levels ax2 dot axh line at 30 with a let's go ahead and just copy and paste it with a line style of dashes a line width of 1.5 and red and let's do the same thing for 70 with the color of green now that now that i think of it uh, 30 indicates oversold so we should buy and 70 is overbought and we should sell so let's switch this when we sh when we buy it should be green and when we sell it should be red okay let's also add the title and plt dot show Okay, that looks great. So here we should have sold, here we should have bought. According to this, we should actually backtest it in order to see if this is profitable or not. Most probably it is not. Uh, and here we should have sold again. We sh and until September, there was no buy signal and we would have sold it almost immediately. You get the gist of it. In a nutshell, today I showed you how to create an RSI indicator only using Pandas. And, and if you found this video interesting, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even subscribe to my channel. In order to stay up to date with my periodical uploads, I tend to upload twice per week, so stay tuned. Okay, I'll see you on the next one.